Welcome to the Baruch Center for Teaching and Learning's Teach Online Course Prep Guide, Week 2. This guide is intended to give instructors who are new to teaching online a four-week process for building a course. This particular video focuses on a second week with three new steps to consider. It also highlights opportunities to engage with our staff in a number of ways. You can check out this week's workshops, discuss online learning research asynchronously with your colleagues, ask us a question in our Q&A forum, or meet with us synchronously via a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Let's get started on the steps to consider for this week. First, consider your course platform. This step is about thinking through the layout of your course and deciding where students will perform the tasks you've planned for them. The place where you'll store class materials like your syllabus, your course readings, links to activities, and assignment descriptions is called your course platform. This week, we'll offer some platform options, such as blogs at Baruch and Blackboard, and encourage you to think about which ones will be best for communicating your course objectives and helping students reach them. See the week two guide for more about this first step. Next, consider designing a second major unit in your upcoming course. Remember, a unit is a specific collection of course content. One unit might focus on one or a few learning objectives. For example, we can think of each of the weeks of this guide as individual units with their own learning goals. So to build a unit for your class, think about a smaller chunk of the larger goal that you want students to accomplish and how to design content and smaller low-stakes assessments to check your students' understanding along the way. See the Week 2 guide for methods to consider here in this second step, including assessment methods and course scaffolding. Still confused about how to design a unit? Remember that you can meet with a member of the CTL staff for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Finally, each week we'll encourage you to take time to think about your students, yourself, and how you can humanize the online classroom. This week, take time to reflect on the classroom culture you wish to cultivate by focusing especially on the accessibility and flexibility of your course elements. As you begin taking this step, consider the complexities and potential constraints placed upon students working off campus. They may be sharing space and technology with family, balancing work or caretaking responsibilities, or joining your class meetings from a whole different part of the world. It's important in the online environment to build a class that maximizes accessibility and provides multiple opportunities for engagement. See the week two guide for ways to reflect on this third step and to view resources for fostering accessible and flexible online learning. Beyond taking these three steps, consider joining any of our workshops during this second week. See the Let's Cook Together section of the week two guide for more details. You can also check out and contribute to our online Q&A forum. And remember to consider signing up for a consultation with us for more focused one-on-one -on -one assistance. Want even more to chew on? Check out additional resources at the bottom of the week two guide for ways to dig deeper when it comes to course accessibility. All right, everyone, that's it for week two. We're happy you're here with us, and we're looking forward to partnering with you as you continue to build your online class. From all of us at the Center for Teaching and Learning, thanks, and we'll see you again in week three.